Welcome to Whatever Works, our unique fortnightly podcast in which we talk about whatever works in our lives and in the lives of our community members. Find us at whateverworks.works. And why not join our community? Simply search for Whatever Works at mewe.com and get stuck in. We're all good. Every, everything is recording now, and I am at your mercy. Are you going to kick things off then? Well, I'm just hang on. I'm just taking some clothes off. <laughs> I normally undress when we record a podcast, but not doesn't usually happen this early. <laughs> Dear list. Oh, we're on. We're live. Hello, everybody. Oh. <laughs> I'm taking my clothes. Don't worry about me. <laughs> oh, I see. Naked Bell. <laughs> Whatever works. <laughs> oh, dear. Hello and welcome, everyone, along to our Whatever Works podcast, which we are recording in the middle of April. It is show 160. How are you doing, Squire? And what colour are you wearing today, Ted? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. A little bit giggly, but that, that'll no doubt help. Yes, I'm very well, thank you, Ted. Enjoying the final turn in the weather that looks as if at last spring may have properly started. But who knows? Yeah, it's certainly getting warmer. And this weekend's going to be warm, apparently. Um... And you know what I think about that. Yeah, you, you know what occurs to me? We're always <laughs> accused that we talk about the weather too much. And if, he, if the Brits don't have anything to talk about, they talk about the weather. I actually like talking about the weather. I don't just do it as a filler. I'm kind of interested in the weather and I enjoy discussing the weather. And therein lies the issue. Yeah, so it's like those people who say, <laughs> oh, the Americans say have a nice day, but they don't really mean it. Well, I think they probably do mean it, actually. So there you are. I, well, say you are. Look at me. I'm full of joy and life this morning. <laughs> they, they might start talking about the weather soon because they're getting some now these days. Um, whereas um, I suppose the, the thing about the Brits is that we have such a range of weather, depending on what time of year That's it is. That's true. That it's, it's kind of usually worth talking about. That's true. If you um, but, want different weather in America, you have to move to a different place. If you want different weather in England, you just stand still and yeah. wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good point. Right, hey, sorry, I've got, I interrupted I've got, you. I've got, carry on, I've carry got on. A, um, No, I was going to say that I've got, a, before we go any further, I've got a new bathroom. Well, a new shower. Oh, yeah. Did you see my photos? I have not said. I'm sorry, no. They're on the MeWe group. Um, I put a, I put them up yesterday. I, I had this bath, as as you know. This I, when I bought this this um, uh, static van. Yes. I, I I couldn't believe there was actually a bath in it. I've never seen a bath in a caravan before. Anyway, um, I've always hated it, and now we got round to um, an opportunity because there was a leak, and the floor underneath in the bathroom was all rotting and wet and um so the insurance company fingers crossed they're going to cough up ah. um, some money to get it fixed so while we were doing that we thought to ourselves me and the family with the um with the bank account um we thought to ourselves we'll <laughs> get a shower in instead of the bath so sure enough that's what we've done and it's cost quite a lot of money so we haven't actually had the final bill yet and we're right. not sure how much of it the insurance company are going to pay but it's going to be over three grand we think wow so that's a sh what cheap. sort of a shower have you, have you got like a butler who stands there may i draw your shower for you mr <laughs> salmon <laughs> It's really nice. You must go and have a look at the photos because I, I put some before and after ones on there, and um, it really is a lovely looking shower. And it's got a, um, it's got a, it hasn't got a plastic um, a tray on the bottom. It's got a, a proper. Um, I should think well, not for three grand. You don't want no plastic yeah. tray. Ted, do you realise you have to review this because I think you will then claim the prize of the most expensive personal review ever on whatever ah. works. <laughs> Uh, yes, indeed. No, you say that about plastic shower trays, but they are. If you go into a caravan, they're nearly always plastic and they always split over time. Whatever you do, yes. you, you can't avoid it. And so this one is made of the stuff. I can't think of the word. What's the stuff that a bath is made of? Oh, it's porcelain. That stuff. Porcelain, Not porcelain. Yeah. Is it porcelain? Okay, is yeah. it porcelain? Oh, no, that's stuff that you make a bath okay, of. Okay, anyway. yeah, bath stuff. Um, and it's made of that, which means that it won't split. It's probably, Hurrah. is it just fibreglass? I mean, does it look and feel no, like no, plastic? No, oh, okay. no, Okay, Por let's go with porcelain. That sounds posh yeah. and expensive. Yeah. <laughs> or it might anyway, be marble. That's... It might be marble, Edward. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes, lovely, marble. Um, but that's what has been, uh, and it's been absolute chaos here. For, uh, they arrived on Tuesday morning. We're now recording on Thursday lunchtime. And they went yesterday afternoon. So they were here for the best part of two whole days. Right. Bang, crash, wallop. Oh, you gosh, know. yes. But you haven't um, had a chance to try it yet. 
No, because they told me I'm not allowed to use it until this evening, which might be Thursday evening. So I will come back and review it once I've got in it and, and tell you if it falls apart. <laughs> oh, yes. Just one quick tip tip. Try and, try and avoid the video review. Don't be tempted. <laughs> no, no, I won't, I assure you. The, um, if people would faint. Uh, the, uh, the, the other thing was, that, and, and, a, and a good point that um, Robert McCrowan made in the MeWe group, is that um, it, I, I sacrificed the, the, the wash hand basin. I said to them, I, I don't need it. There's lo loads of other places to wash your hands yes. after you've been to the loo in this caravan, static, whatever you call it. And I can, I can, I don't need to, to, to do that. We can save a bit of money. Anyway, they did leave a space for that. So as I was saying to Robert, later on, if we feel that we should be doing that or need to do that or whatever, or sell it to someone else, we could easily put one in. And the, the, the fitters who did the job, him and his son, they were really nice people. Um, they uh, they did a good job and they, they, they've left that opportunity for later. Or you could anyway. fill the space with a Bluetooth loudspeaker or a double A battery Yay. cabinet or something. <laughs> uh, but that is, a, that is a bit of a problem actually because there's no cabinets in the bathroom at all now. There's nowhere to put anything. So I need to I need to get some sort of, I don't know, um, some, some unit to put towels on and stuff I suppose. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, th that's been the excitement of my week, I think. Oh, excellent. And um, and, and we've yet to see the bill. What, what about you? What's been going on in your neck of the woods? I did, You're going away, aren't you? I'm going away. I'm taking my mother away. Um, through the work that I do with filming for cruise ships, I'm taking my mother on a five-day river cruise. So it's basically like a sea cruise, but a much, much smaller ship with much fewer people on it, but equally right. exciting and fun. Uh, we start in Amsterdam. We end in Amsterdam, which makes it nice and easy for me to get my elderly mother safely to and from. Uh, we're leaving. We're leaving tomorrow morning for that. Hence our recording a day early. Sorry, dear listener. Yeah. And last week, I just got back on Sunday. I did a day trip to Germany on Sunday, which was rather fun. Um, for a previous film that I'd made, they wanted some photographs of one of their ships sailing. So my friend Callum and I flew out to Frankfurt, and for a single day, and we hired a car. And we drove, we sort of skipped ahead of the ship. We drove ahead, we stood and we waited. And as the ship came by, Callum flew his drone, took some pictures with the pretty castles and buildings in the background and mountains and what have you. And then we would jump in the car and drive another couple of miles down the road and wait for the ship again. And we did this all afternoon, which was great fun. And really? Ted, yeah. oh my, I had a car. I had the cheapest, because we're only, you know, we, we needed a car for it was something like four or five hours tops. So I just hired the cheapest car I could from Frankfurt Airport. They only upgraded me. Two, I've never heard of this thing. It's a BMW and it was called a Z7 or something. Oh, on me. Ted, this thing did naught to 100 in two seconds. <laughs> 100k, <laughs> that is. This thing, I mean, just for fun, because you know on the German motorways there's no speed limit. Yeah, yeah. We were on a clear stretch of road and I said, okay, Callum, three, two, one. And I floored it. And I mean, you could feel your teeth, your, your skin go <laughs> to the back of your face and you were pinned to the back of this. This thing is monstrous. Wow. I mean, Lord knows what kind of engine it had. You know, I'm, I'm not a car person. I don't understand cars and engines no. and mechanics. But this thing was like a bat out of hell. The sort of car I couldn't sell fast enough if I actually owned one. But to have it for just two or three hours to play in was just glorious. <laughs> Great fun. There you are. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very good. Well, I hope you have a nice trip anyway. And, Thank you. Um, yes. Five days, and uh, um, where, where are you flying from? We're we're not flying. We're driving. Oh uh, no, this could oh, be fun. Sorry. We're driving. Yes, I'm driving. My mother, I, my mother won't fl doesn't fly anymore. It's a bit too complicated oh, for right. all that palaver. So we're driving, and we're going over on the ferry. He said tentatively, with all the <laughs> chaos that's going on at Dover. Luckily, yeah. we had the foresight to go we're going to stay in a hotel in Dover tonight. So we will be literally about a mile from the ferry port in the morning. Right. Uh, so. Fingers crossed, we'll get over on a ferry, and then we'll then it's a three and a half hour drive from Calais to Amsterdam. So nice and easy. Oh right, is that oh that's, I didn't realise it was that. Quick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was a little bit disappointed because I know Germany very well now through the work that I've done there and the films I'm making, and I wanted to take my mother to Germany. And when mm -hmm. this opportunity came up, uh, I my first reaction was, oh, I wanted to go to Germany. But actually, it's very sensible. It's nice. It's close. It's somewhere I don't know so well. I don't really know Holland that well, so that's more interesting for me. Much more comfortable for my mother. Less travel. So yeah, should be fun, and I will report upon it on my return. Uh, and when you get over there, don't forget you're British. You drive on the left. 
<laughs> Especially at roundabouts. We'll come to that in a minute, won't we'll we? Come to, yeah, we will. Anyway, look, whateverworks.works is our website. Links to all the stuff we're going to talk about via that route. That's and... the first time it's taken 10 minutes to reach that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um, we're, we're, we're turning it into a house party, I told you. Oh, dear. Um, Whatever works um, is the name of the group in MeWe, where we hope that you'll bring your stuff for us to bring to the show and um, natter about what, whatever works in your lives too. TedSalmon.com is where you need to go if you get lost with anything at all. All the MeWe groups, all the audio podcasts linked out from there. And AidenBell.com is where you'll find all the stuff that Aiden is up to and how to book him up for your project in the coming weeks and months i'm sure he'll be delighted to he's very flexible you know. i'm very flexible yes yes he said removing <laughs> what, whatever you need doing moving further articles of clothing it gets so hot i don't know what it is i sit here doing a, and as i get excited and chatty with you i get hotter and hotter oh yeah, yeah. Tr- don't <laughs> oh no <laughs> uh, right let's get some feedback going from that said group the oh no this is mine first this is a bit of a kind of still using in a sense because i did bring this to the show about five years ago um because i needed to get some dehumidifiers because my caravan at singleton at, in chichester was getting damp and i didn't really hadn't thought about this but caravans get damp and sure enough last week i pulled the bed away from the wall the double bed which is a really big heavy double bed and i pulled it away from the wall and sure enough behind there it's all damp and mildew and horrible anyway i cleaned it off and then i thought to myself yeah this is going to be that same problem i had down there so i got these same very the same things that i got before the ancio dehumidifiers and they're little kind of plastic bucket thingies and you take the lid off and you stick it to where there's de- um, uh, moisture and damp and it sucks it in it's like it's like kind of bits of rice or chemicals or whatever it is like i can't remember what it is but it absorbs the condensation and the moisture and and, and stops you getting mold so um i'd consulted with steve about this because i'd completely forgotten about the the five year ago thingy um and he he told me about getting a dehumidifier humidifier. he used to live in a van as well yes. back in yonks ago and um, uh, yeah, so so we'll see what happens with them. I'll report but back. Did but Steve, I, I, did I have every confidence that they'll work fine. Did Steve use these? I could imagine Steve Litchfield having some electrical powered, clever gizmo rather than just. I mean, these are very clever. By the way, they are unique hydrophilic crystals. I'm just reading on Amazon. Ah, in that's there. the one. And I've used these myself too, and they are very <laughs> clever, aren't they? Because you put them somewhere, and you come back a month later, and you've got a pot of water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's it's quite frightening, really, isn't it? Because yes. you think to yourself, no wonder I'm not breathing very well. You know, I'm sleeping in this bed and there's all damp behind me. Oh, I and, remember uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, a million years ago, I had a car that got very damp and condensed inside and I used to put them in the car. Oh, yeah. And they, yet again, they, 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 they sucked up the water like it was going out of style. Yeah, they're really good, aren't they? And um, so anyway, there's a pack of 10 for 15 quid, which makes them £1.50 each. Do you see how I worked that out? And, um, <laughs> I'm surprised and the, you didn't bring them on cheap as chips, Ted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be bending the rules. No, I'm going to bend the rules on that later. Okay. <laughs> Uh, right, um, Gareth is next. Gareth is next. Now, apologies to Gareth and to you, Ted. I'm about to say words that I don't understand at all. <laughs> <laughs> Gareth Williams brings us Plex. I would definitely say Plex works, says Gareth, once you get the content on there. Now, we're talking about online content here, aren't we? No, we're talking about a server. So let me just explain. <laughs> Please this, do. <laughs> the Plex, Plex is, a, is a server that you set up on your computer. Ah, OK. Um, and you put all your media on it, and then you can send it out over your network to your telly or your phone or whatever you, else you want to send it to. And so all your all your films and your gotcha. music and okay. everything. Private, private casting, right. private, private streaming yeah, from your yeah, own yeah. server. OK, I'll now say it again. I know all about this. Gareth Williams on Plex. <laughs> Gareth says, I would say, definitely say Plex works once we get the content on there. I would agree with you, Gareth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. It is Roku's galore here. And having a Plex set up with the server running in the home office complements all our other streaming services very nicely. It's ideal for rare or unavailable online on streaming stuff. 
With the price of DVDs so low, either secondhand or indeed new, as well as most people having a sizable back catalogue, Plex just makes sense. There is much more to it these days, but even a, so there is much more to it these days, but even stripped back to its core purpose, it's an ideal addition to my entertainment world. So if, ed, educate this dance here, Ted. Basically, you take your content, your DVDs, or God knows, even your VHS videos, whatever you've got, and you digitize and you put it onto your Plex server, and then whenever you want to watch it, you just sit down at your telly and it's there on your server for you at hand. Via your um, network, so via your router. Via your router. S yeah, so so you, so your server can be anything. My server is just is just a hard drive on my computer. Yes, and as long as you're, you you've got to leave your computer on, obviously, otherwise the the network can't see it. Um, so you leave your computer on. The router picks up the um, the connection between the computer and, in my case, the TV. But it could be your tablet or yes, phone or yes. whatever. Um, and it, and you then select. There's on on the Roku TV. There's a there's a really good Plex app, and you you can then go into that and um, and get all the, the 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 stuff from your server up to there and watch it. So it's a really good system which Gareth Miles put me onto, um, and um, it, it really does work ever so well. And it doesn't rely on being connected or online or anything. Yes. It's just a local network. It really so, it is yeah. black magic, isn't it? I mean, if you open a video on YouTube on your phone and then you say, cast this to my telly, please, you could then switch off your phone and the video goes on casting. So my, you know, being an old fashioned guy, I'm thinking, well, where is this signal actually coming from? It's not coming through the phone. The phone must have instructed something to send it to the telly. Have I instructed yeah. my router to send it to the telly or have I instructed somewhere online to send it down? You know, it's baffling. You, you've, you've instructed Google server. Baffling so, black so magic. <laughs> So, so all, all the Chrome, uh, yeah. sorry, all the all, all the Chrome, um, 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 uh, what's it called? Cast, that, casting. Uh, Chromecast. All the Chromecast thing he does, all your router does, is take the um, instruction. Yes. And then Google sends it down the line in YouTube's case to your to wherever you're 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 wanting to put it. It, it is. It's a different world we live in today. People coming 50 years forward would see it as all black magic, yes, wouldn't yes. they? Yes, yes. And I mean, you and I are old enough to remember, you know, getting on your bike and going down to Ritz Video and picking something you wanted mm. to watch for the evening. I mean, it's a, it's, it's another world, isn't it? Indeed it is. Um, so anyway, there you go. Um, thanks, Gareth. Yes, thank I'm you, Gareth. You, I'm glad you're using Plex. <laughs> <laughs> a little complex now. for me. <laughs> Moving on yes. and presenting the JBL Tuner 2. Oh, another Bluetooth speaker! Well, yes, but this one has a twist. Oh, okay. It's also a DAB radio. Oh, it's got a DAB. Oh, well, then that's fine. We've never had DAB radios on. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Should I disappear difference... and make a cup of coffee at this point? <laughs> <laughs> the, difference, the difference here is that both are in the same unit, and that's quite unusual. Well, it's not uh, horribly unusual, but it's it's not very okay, usual. Right. Usually Bluetooth speakers are Bluetooth speakers and DAB radios are DAB yes, radios. Yes, yes, okay, fair enough. The, the crossover is. Um, I did actually review the Sony D X D R V one B T D. Oh, that back one. in <laughs> yes, um, the summer of eighteen. I, I I reviewed that, and that one does similar. Do you know? Things. I even remember That's... that, Ted. I actually remember talking about that with you. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's a it's a nice unit, and it's still here, and it still works. And the it, the the what it's got similar with the this um, JBL one is that it's got a battery inside as well. So the JBL is a cute little thing. Um, I got it second hand from PSE Classifieds. Uh -huh. um, new price is about um, eighty quid, and you can get it in black and white. The one that the bloke had on the um, Classifieds was white, which I wouldn't have chosen. But it's okay. It's it's quite it's quite cute. You can always spray. So it. yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so is it good? <laughs> or put a skin on it. Yeah. IPX7 waterproof, which means it's not dustproof or sandproof, but it is waterproof. No, but you could um, spray it then. It's IP7. <laughs> yeah, put some scotch guard on it. Um, the lithium ion battery is good for 12 hours. I've tested that and mm -hmm. it actually is. I'll come to that in a minute. There's five presets, an LCD display, which is a bit clunky to be honest. It's kind of a bit um, cheap and not very um, informative of stuff, but it has got USB C charging. Um, it's not the loudest speaker for its size, but it, yeah, it's good enough for a kind of small barbecue or party or something, or just in the lounge um, or sitting doing work. Um, 
and it's um, it's got a kind of half decent bass if you wind up the volume. It, uh, at smaller volumes, it hasn't hasn't got so good, but it's good for a bedside or it's good for a kitchen. Um, and uh, there are little niggles about it, like the display won't turn. Yeah. Um, sorry, the dis display doesn't stay on, and it hasn't got a clock. You know, if it's going to be a bedside thing, you want a clock on it, um, which is a bit of naff. But anyway, um, the 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 battery uh, takes about three and a half hours to charge. <laughs> I think right. it's actually quite it's actually quite hard to tell because um, the there's no proper percentage battery thingy readout. All you get is this kind of picture of a battery with these three sections on it, like you used to with old cameras, and you know. Yes, the, yes, the display, yeah. yeah. And you can't actually see accurately what where you are with the battery. Anyway, I think it takes about three and a half hours. Reception's okay, really good. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I did, yeah. So my testing, they, they say twelve hours, and I put it on about twenty-five to thirty percent volume. I say about a third volume. And I tested it on for six, and I got sixteen hours out of it, and that was on DAB. And I did the same test on FM, and I was expecting it to be better, but actually it wasn't. It may have been like an hour more or something, right. but it, I was I was expecting FM usage to be much better on the battery because I thought that that's what happened, but obviously not. Um, perhaps they've they've changed that these days. Um, anyway, really nice little dinky. Um, DAB radio, sorry, DAB radio and Bluetooth speaker hooks up by Bluetooth to my devices seamlessly, really works well. There are some niggles, but it's cheap and it's quite a good sound. And it's got a proper pulling out telescopic aerial. Oh, hey! I love those. Oh, pulling out, <laughs> yes, pulling out aerial. Wow. Yeah, so that's the JBL Tuner 2. Again, it's you know it's one of those things that's difficult for me to talk about because it, it doesn't come into my use case. But I think it's very attractive, and I remember you talking about the the earlier one. Um, I personally wouldn't worry that it would that it was it's an LCD display. That that I like that. I think that's quite neat. Um, I like it, Ted. It's nice, and I feel sorry for your neighbours. Yeah. Thirty two hours of Ted doing radio testing on <laughs> nonstop. <laughs> It was only on. It was twenty five percent volume. Yeah, yes, yeah, thirty percent or whatever. But um, yeah, it, it, the the LCD is okay. It's just that it won't stay on. It hasn't got a clock. Hasn't got a proper battery readout. And so when when you've done touched anything on the device, it comes on for like about I don't know thirty seconds or a minute or something, and then just goes yeah, off. Yeah. Now if you if you plug in the USB C cable, um, and it's charging, it will stay on then. But it does go down to a kind of lower brightness. But yeah, if, when you're on battery, it just switches off. Right. But um, so what you would really anyway, want it, is some sort of control of display, so you can you can decide when you want it on and off and fading. And that, that would be yeah. nice. That would be nice. But it is a clunky LCD, as I <clears> say. It's, it's it's one of these LCD displays where the the letters are, are kind of dot matrix yeah. matrixy, yes. and 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 they're like too tall for their width, and you know it's just it's just a cheap. Display, it's not clunky, yeah. Ted. It's retro. <laughs> yeah. yeah anyway there it is matthew jones has com commented do you remember i had a rant about roundabouts i think that seemed yes. to set off quite a discussion in the group which is fabulous <laughs> that's what we're here for so thank you for joining in with that guys matthew jones responded i think was first up saying i have to share this agreement i have to share in this agreement I'll start again. I have to share this in agreement with Aiden, he says. Well, thank you, except that Aiden can't say it. It's an ongoing issue in my neck of the woods, says Matthew, with this roundabout, which he posted a picture of. The problem is that everyone seems to understand the 12 o'clock rule, but no one can seem to agree on where 12 o'clock lies on the roundabout from any particular approach, as some of the approaches aren't particularly square at the junction. Are you following at the back? It seems obvious to me. I'm glad it seems obvious to you, Matthew. But I'm sure those with the opposite opinion to me will consider themselves equally correct, too. Well, that that's actually the main thing with driving, isn't it, Ted? That everybody thinks they know best. I think that's half the issue of all the driving yeah. problems in the world. And I'm as guilty of this myself as the next man is... There's something inherent about being a driver where you think I'm a good driver and no one else is. Yeah, that's, that is probably It is true. very People bizarre, are, isn't oh, it? People are overconfident, aren't they? Yeah. Anyway, uh, Matthew goes on to say, then there are those that don't understand the 12 o'clock 
12 o'clock. 12 o'clock rule. I've never even heard no, of I, 12 o'clock rule. What is it? I don't well, know. No, I, 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 I looked it up. I've now looked it up and I know. But, um, okay. I, 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 and of course, I, I knew what it was, but it, I've just never heard it called No, that. I haven't either. Uh, he says, then throw in those that do indeed know the right thing to do, but don't like getting into a confrontation with other drivers. And then you end up with everyone inventing a middle lane and taking that yeah. for a quiet life. Yeah, in a way that goes back to what I was saying. People sort of feel... That they're a very good, you know, everyone says I'm a good driver and I'm the only one on the road and sod everyone else. So, <laughs> but he, yeah. he posted an interesting picture and the, con the conversation grew from there and it was it was a lovely chat. Uh, somewhere else on the web, I've, we've managed to find Ted. I thank you for finding us because I know that you've posted it in our recording notes. Yeah, Generally yeah. speaking, if the exit you need to take is at 12 o'clock, i.e. straight ahead or before, you would choose the left lane on the approach to and on the roundabout. If your exit is at one o'clock or after, you would choose the right-hand lane. Yeah, that's a sort of duh moment, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just didn't know it had a name. And also, what happens if it's 3 a.m.? Are you going to go reversing round to the right? Yeah, I know, I know. As various people have said in the MeWe group, it does get complicated when there's no clear 12 o'clock because of offset exits or, or even where there's a big roundabout and there are several small roundabouts off it. Yeah. You just, yeah. do you know what? I mean, I think I concluded last time by saying, and I say again, it's common sense. It's just be aware of other people and be aware of other drivers. And even if you're doing something that you know isn't by the book, in inverted commas, as long as you and your fellow drivers are working together to drive safe, then fine just go around yeah. left don't go around on the right which i had to do on sunday because i was in germany <laughs> uh, yeah i was saying on the last show about driving abroad and r roundabouts really confusing me but yeah i i think i do it right but i completely get this thing in fact ian barton posted in the mewi group a picture of this roundabout that had about six or seven roundabouts around i think it. i know and it or oh, no one there's one in hemel hempstead i've driven on yes yes they yeah, are terrifying and the, and the, <laughs> And, and the advice there is to ignore the fact that in the middle of that, there's a big roundabout. That just just don't even consider that the middle bit is a roundabout. Yes. You just go with the small ones. Yes. Yeah. Do you know, in Germany, I've had what I call English moments. Thank goodness they're extremely rare. But, you know, I'll be on a roundabout and I'll turn left and think, oh, God, I'm in Germany. Quick, I'm going the wrong yeah, way around yeah. the roundabout. You know, it, it, once in a blue moon, that happens. And that is very scary yeah. indeed. It is. I do agree. And I've done that a couple of times in France. Um, and, it, yeah, you, you, you think, good, great. I once drove all the way back very, very early morning. Yeah. I drove all the way back about a mile and a half from, <laughs> the, from, from the... From the bread shop to the where we were staying. And, I, and when I got in, I, I just suddenly realised... I didn't realise until I'd actually got out of the vehicle and I suddenly thought back, oh my word, I was on the left. But your baguette was unscathed, <laughs> so it was OK. <laughs> yes, indeed. I was trying to think of the French word for a bread shop. What is it? Patisserie? Uh, no. Patisserie is where they... Uh, that's the cake shop. I'm not sure what the... B Boulangerie? No. no. Uh, I can't remember now, but I'm sure someone will tell yes. us. <laughs> <laughs> right, what's next? I've got a confession to make. Because I put in the recording notes, I've only used this once so far, but actually that was a prediction because I haven't used it. <laughs> Reviewed unseen. <laughs> and it's a Yard Force 40V cordless lawnmower. We got this from oh, my dad. Who, right. Uh, now at the moment my dad's got a broken hip and so he can't do anything. So I was um, in charge of cutting their grass and they've got this really crappy cab um, cable operated electric mower which they got on the cheap some time ago and i said to them uh, that's a, that's a rubbish solution you know for goodness sake get a battery one they're not really that bad um and anyway so sorry but badly priced anyway so we got one and i haven't used it yet but it looks like i might be using it later today or tomorrow um and it's cordless it's got a lithium-ion battery in it and it does a quick charge under an hour mm. from flat to to uh, flat to um, full. You know, full. <laughs> yeah. um, it's got a 37 centimeter cutting um, blade thingy and a rear roller for stripy looking lawn. Yes. Single lever height adjustment <laughs> with seven cut and blah, blah, blah. 40 litre grass collecting bag on the back, blah, blah, blah. It was easy to put together. I did that. And um, the, the battery charges, you know, the, the, the instructions are all 
pictures. There's no words at oh, all. Oh, those. Okay, uh, yeah. Yeah, but but anyway, it, it put it together, <laughs> and um, it was uh, you know the, the the it was fairly easy to work out. It, it comes with a, ch a battery charger, obviously, and you stick that in the the box, and then um, it it works really well. Anyway, the reason that we bought this one was, and I'll link in the show notes to the fact that this was the best buy on the BBC Gardener's World magazine. Ah. Oh, well, you can't go wrong then, can you? Quite, quite. But no doubt they're getting a bung for whatever they're yeah. putting on there. But anyway, the, the the fact is that it it looks like it's very good quality. It's got nice big wheels and all the things they said on that BBC Garner's World thingy that I stumbled into um, was was pretty true so far um, in terms of looking at it and setting it up and all the rest of it. Anyway, I'll report back on the next show about how it performs. I think it'll look good. It's got this um, lever on the side which you can move it up and down with obviously in the usual way um and uh, i should look forward to that it's on amazon for 200 and, uh, well we got it for 212 at the moment i think it's 230 right um but it's uh, uh yeah recommended by bbc gardener's world and i'll report back about how good it was but it looks like it's going to be the part very nicely i'm very curious i'm also very curious to know how long it does indeed last i mean how how do you think your lawn is big enough that you will exhaust it and be able to report back on how much lawn mowing you could do before the battery went or is your lawn not big enough for that no it's not it's not big enough but somebody in the um amazon uh review comments said that they had a garden that was um what did they say um it, it was it was like I can't remember the, the exact measurements now, but it was it was one really big garden, yeah, and then one smaller garden, and they did all of that, and it still had juice in it. So um, I th I, th th there'll be no problem in that yeah. respect with us. In fact, the the only the only danger will be keep charging the battery more than we need to yes we need to be we need to be brave enough not to charge it every time you know what <laughs> hark back to our non-existent april the first edition last show we need to see if we can find some sort of um a, a, adaptive uh part that, that will take 600 double a batteries <laughs> that you can run Yay. this lawnmower on or something that'd be uh... great fun <laughs> It'll be a laugh, wouldn't it? Now, talking of running things on batteries that you might not expect, your mother has posted Esther Salmon. Oh, by the way, uh, a quick interjection. You were quite right. It's boulangerie. I looked it up. Uh, uh. The French bakery is called a boulangerie. Right. Esther Salmon, who's not been to the French baker, but she brings us an Oral-B Pro-Health battery-powered electric toothbrush. Um, Whoa. Sorry? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Esther says, I bought this new double A. Do you know, I've slowed up a bit just because I'm getting my head around this because Oral-B, I have an Oral-B, my mother has an Oral-B. I think they're wonderful toothbrushes. I've never even heard of them being battery powered. So this is fabulous. Esther says, I bought this new double A powered toothbrush to replace my old rechargeable one, which I'd had for years. Was that Oral-B as well, by the way, Ted? Do you know the one that she's uh, had? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah excellent. I, th I think it was, yeah. The price for a new rechargeable one was very high, so I decided to look into the possibility of battery operated this time instead. I had used battery operated one to go on a holiday previously and found it quite convenient. After trying a cheap one, which was almost impossible to open up to replace the batteries, I just... Oh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you about that. Oh, yeah. I, I, the, the, my mum said to me, I can't get this battery cover closed. Um, and so can you do it? And even I, <laughs> with uh, as big a mm. bloke as I am, uh, in the end, I had to get it, get it on the corner of a it. table. Oh, God. And and push all my weight behind it to make this click into place. Really bad design. Anyway, do carry on. Yes. Anyway, so there we go. She said she couldn't replace the batteries, so she decided to look for something better. I found, you've interrupted me now mid-flow. <laughs> I found this one, said Esther. And although the price seemed a lot at nearly £30 compared with other battery operated units, I decided to try it. I've had it for about two weeks now and I'm totally satisfied. My teeth feel great and I really like the convenience of not having to worry about recharging. I've not had it long enough to see how long the batteries last, but I have do have high hopes based on the reviews. It looks nice. It has a two minute vibration call to show that the teeth should be clean by then. And the range of Oral-B toothbrush heads will fit, which is great as I have a stock. Oh, don't we all, Esther? So far, so good. <laughs> looks like a good buy. It does indeed. The picture looks good. As I say, I mean, I've been a fan of Oral-B toothbrushes for some years. I think they're great. They're sound. They're good. They're well-made products. And if you found a Oh, I mean, Ted, this is heaven for you. A double-A battery-operated Oral-B toothbrush. Yay. What more could you want? 
<laughs> yes, indeed. Um, I, have, did you say that you got an Oral B? Is that just a, a manual? Uh, no, I've got the manual somewhere, but no, the toothbrush is in the bathroom. <laughs> Uh, no, it's it's just the regular one with the with the chi charger that it sits on. The oh okay, yeah, uh, the, 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 the so you've got the recharge. It's a recharge, yeah, but recharge, yeah, yeah, rechargeable via chi charging, which is absolutely no problem at all because it lives on it. Yeah, yes, th- right. The whole point about this exercise was that she didn't want when they go away. She didn't want to have to take that little stand with her. Yeah. She wanted, yeah. Just, well, you know, which is exactly what's the... happened this very day because I've had to go and say to my mother, don't forget to bring your toothbrush charging thing when we go yeah, away, and I'm yeah. doing the same. So, yeah, I mean, Esther, I wish you'd found this two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Robert McCrowan jumps in. The price of electric toothbrushes and their replacement heads is staggering, he says. The profit margin must be huge. Once again, sounding like a stuck record, he says. I suggest I'd suggest not going to the main UK brands like Oral B. Oh. There are hun- there are hundreds to choose from on AliExpress. I went for the Xiaomi, of course I did. I'm a fanboy, and it was twenty one quid. And the replacement heads are easy to get, four for seven pound fifty. You can even buy them on the Xiaomi online UK store if you want to, but you will pay more by that route. Is, so yes, is there anything? He, I, I wonder. Is there anything I, I think he's got shares. Yeah, I was going to ask you, Ted. Is there nothing that Sa- Xiaomi don't make? I mean, toothbrushes, <laughs> telephones, what did we have the other week? I forget now, but so many different things. They do, they make all sorts wow. of things. And I'm and I'm sure that, that Robert's got shares in the company yeah. and in AliExpress. I would... But, uh, sorry, after you, Ted, after you. I was just, just to say, I'm, I'm only joking, Robert. It's, it's really good to get that perspective on things. I know that I had a bad experience ordering from AliExpress, but it seems to be um, that most people are uh, it's fine. Oh, absolutely, and, and and I too. I, yeah. I, I you know, I, I'm I'm an Oral B fanboy. I mean, you know, it's it's the same as it's it's Apple versus Google, isn't it? With whatever ecosystem you prefer. I would say the last two or three or even four toothbrushes that I've bought, I've bought on Black Friday because it seems that Amazon's main selling item on Black Friday. Friday is electric toothbrushes. Oh right. Ah, now I'll tell you what I found out about Amazon recently oh, yes. is that the things that are put forward for you in the um sale of the day or whatever oh, yeah. it is, or Black Friday are things very much heavily weighted on what your previous browsing history has been. And I didn't realise that at first. I thought that your Black Friday sale was your Black Friday sale. Everyone saw the same, but you don't. The things that it pushes forward for you are things that it thinks okay, you'll be interested in. Fair point. However, when I do Black Friday, I actually search. I actually go into Black Friday and say, show me all items, show me the ones with the biggest discount. So, yes, but fair enough. I take the point. So, like advertising, they will just send you things that they think you're likely to want to buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This man's a sucker show- for electric toothbrushes. Let's tell him to buy another one. <laughs> Show me a show me. <laughs> show me a show me. Oh dear, play me a Actually the actually this the Xiaomi stuff the Xiaomi stuff is really good. We were talking before about the little screwdriver set and, and just all sorts of Xiaomi stuff and it, it really is ever so good quality. It's a bit like the new Sony, I think. Now you interrupted my slinky link. You said show me a show me. I was going to say play me a jingle. Still using and still I'm very sorry for interrupting your flow. 39 minutes before the first jingle. I say my PRS won't be so good this week. <laughs> and we didn't think we we thought we didn't have enough content today. All right, what right, are you still I'm, using? I'm still using the Aspectech. No, I'll try that again. Aspectech. Aspectech. Fly and insect killer. Oh, should I redo the, the Should I re-record the jingle? Still killing. <laughs> Uh, so yes, I, I, I guess it's a bit um, a bit uh, controversial this one because people don't like killing insects these days. But anyway, it, when you live in a, a van and you have to have windows and doors open all the time, it really suits me, um, and it works really well. So I typically put it on at night as soon as the windows and doors are shut in the late evenings. Um, turn this thing on and um, it zaps any insects, flies and stuff that have got in during the day. Worked really well. Um, I got it out again this week for the season coming as it's warming up. And I bought it in April 19. So that's uh, three. Is that three years ago? It yeah, is, isn't it? it is. Blimey. Yeah, that, there's that COVID year again. Yeah. 
Yeah, and so the season is upon us. Um, and I love those zapping sounds. It's great fun. You're sit sitting there watching the telly, mind your own business. <laughs> I like the sound of things dying. <laughs> and it goes, and, it, and you and you hear this. You hear this. It's like a thunderclap. Um, uh, but anyway, yeah, worth every penny. Ted the Pesky. Impaler. Okay. <laughs> 32 quid it is. Uh, th that's gone up, you know, since I bought it. Um, but then everything seems to have it's gone up. It's 34 now. As I look at it, it's £34.58. It? Uh, it's getting more expensive all the time. My case. There you are. Yeah. Up by the minute. Anyway, get rid of the pesky, <laughs> bleeding, flying things, I think. I've just had a very sort of Heath Robinson, Wallace and Gromit esque idea. You could have one of these that has the, uh, the, the, the UV light so that attracts the insects, but when they fly towards it, there's a vacuum and they get sucked through and blown outside the other side, outside into the open air. <laughs> very good, yes. So that's the humane, <laughs> the humane version. Instead of bzz, what you hear is <laughs> as they get sucked out and blown. Through, you know, like a, like an air conditioning unit blowing it out the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you can make a fortune. Go for it. I could, yes. We need a good marketing ploy. You've heard of blow flies? Now blow your flies! Jingle number two, and what now? I'm very curious here. Is it actually cheap as chips, ah. or do you have to buy 86 to get the price down? Yeah, this is me bending the rules again. <laughs> you have to buy two of them. Um, so, no, hang on a minute. £3.50 for a two-pack, and no, they're £3.50 each for the two-pack, so actually it's seven quid. But if you buy three, then they're £3 each, because it's eight ninety nine. Anyway, I don't care. I bent okay. the rules. This is the <laughs> cellularized right-angled USB-C adapter. Oh, somebody bent so the adapter as well, didn't they? How weird! <laughs> yes, it's um, it's a, uh, it's a bit of a tech corner, I'm afraid. But the the difference with this one is that it takes. I've got this laptop right, and on the right-hand side is the USB-C port, which is really inconvenient because I want my mouse there, and when you're limited for space, you want. You know, yes. every every inch is is important, sort of thing. You know, so this thing instead of the USB C um, to the hub pointing straight outwards with its cable, this allows you to turn it in ninety degrees. But the trick here is that it's got to be a proper one that passes through all the the right electronic gubbins. It can't just be a dumb one because then you lose all the benefits of the hundred watt power yes, yes, charging yes. and the um, the gigabits per second um, um, or. Uh, whatever yeah. it is I, I don't understand all that crap but th this protects your data transfer speed and quick charge stuff and it turns it through sim very simple just turns it through it's male to female and turns it through 90 degrees and um, I think it's cheap as chips personally but I expect you disagree well, no whether or not it's I'm no I, 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 I'm te I tease <laughs> there's no reason I mean it's an interesting item and bring it to the show by whatever means we can and I like that again I, I wish I needed one because looking at the pictures it is very very clever because it how many times have we all had situations where we want to plug something in in some particular position and the wretched cable is sticking out in the way of something else. So, um, exactly. yeah, I mean, I could do with some of these, even old-fashioned USB-A, I'd be pleased to have a couple of these. These are, these are fun. Indeed, yes. You know what it is with those jingles? You wait 39 minutes and then three come along at once. <laughs> I want one, I want one, I want one. I want one of those. Well, I want one of the, I'll tell you what I want is actually... There's a microphone. I, I saw this YouTube video the other yeah. day, and this guy, this woman actually, had a microphone attached to their lapel. And I thought, yeah, that sounds good, like a good idea. I want some of that. So I, I, anyway, I stumbled into this thing called the Mic Mini. The Mic Plus Mini wearable wireless condenser microphone. 99 quid on Kickstarter. And yeah, you just kind of hang it. There's a road version of this, which is really, really expensive, but this is much cheaper. And you can use it to record on and connect by Bluetooth and do what you like with it. But it just saves for anyone that, um, you know, is not um, wanting to have cables everywhere. I, I moved my computer again this week and cables, bloody cables yes, everywhere. Yes, yes. It's like spaghetti. Honestly, it's like spaghetti junction. I thought to myself, I could do with something like this. Just stick it on your lapel when you want to use it. Hook it up. 
and um, Bob's your uncle, podcast it away. It would be fun because but... you could actually podcast wandering around the house. You could say, I'm just off to make a cup of tea, but keep going. Yeah. But yeah, in fact, that could be quite good fun, couldn't it? Perhaps we should do that. <laughs> you know what? I, I know these things have all... I mean, these are... Working in theatre and film and TV, etc. You know, I know lapel mics of old. These are these tiny, yeah. tiny little microphones that you can stick on the top of your head or underneath a wig or in your hat or in your in your lapel. But of course, they're so small that they can't be seen either from the third row of the stalls yeah, in the theatre yeah. or, or by, with cameras. This is just a sort of thicker, fatter, probably cheaper, but more convenient and usable version of that, isn't it? Something where it doesn't yeah. matter that you can see that someone's wearing a microphone. No, there's no problem. No, in the visual it, exactly. There. Yeah. Um, and you probably get super quality uh, as well with a mic this size. I would imagine you probably would because it's it's not tiny weeny. No. It's got it's it's got some size to it, and it's but it's not too big. It's got a ten hour battery life apparently. And um, what else does it say? Can I ask it? you um, without um, without you you'll, you should know without my reading through it? Does it broadcast? Does it transmit the signal, or does it purely record inside itself? I think you can hook it up by Bluetooth. Right, okay. Yeah, I think that was what I think so. Um, so yeah, I'm sure you you can use it as a um, as a microphone to then connect to your computer, or if you want to, you can record inside. Super. It. Yeah. So I, I do. I do. So you believe, could go out on a location. Um, you could be doing a report on something and have it on and wander around in a building or outside somewhere, and it's it's quietly recording everything you say. Or not I quietly, do believe I hope. that is true. <laughs> as long as, as long as it's within range of the Bluetooth, that's yes. the thing. Yes, excellent. Actually, I'm, I'm not sure if you if it records on itself. Now. Well, even if it doesn't, Ted, it you could just have your phone in your pocket and record to that. You could. Anyway, there you go. A nice little condenser microphone, which looks quite good quality. And um, I, I don't think it's got its own storage. I think I think this is just for Bluetooth out. No, because um, the first sentence anyway. here says it's capable of providing up to 10 hours of recording, unless it means the battery will go flat in 10 hours. We need to do some more research, folks, but I yeah, do like yeah, this, yeah. nevertheless. You know, yeah, you like the way that we're so prepared. Yes, I, well, I wasn't, it wasn't my place to say so, Ted. But <laughs> next time, uh, do your homework. <laughs> or we shall put you into a room. 101, Slinky Link. <laughs> I went to Fenwick's the other day. Um, I had to pick up a drone for this shoot on Sunday and that was right beside Brent Cross Shopping Centre. So I said to my mother, would you like to come with me and we can do some shopping? And she said, yes, she needed a new jacket. And so we decided to go to Fenwick to see if my mother could get a new jacket. And I noticed something that's been creeping up on us for the last few years and it's really starting to annoy me. Do you remember the old days when you went to a department store and you wanted to buy a pair of jeans? You'd go to the department store, you'd go to the men's department and you'd say, where are the jeans? And they'd point you in the direction and you'd have lots of jeans from different makes and you'd choose your jeans and you'd buy them or not, right? That don't yes. happen no more. Now you yeah. go into the shop and you go to the you go in to find your jeans and you go to the department and you have a Levi section, a French connection section, a monsoon section, a Hobbs, a Mulberry, etc, etc, etc. The shop is no longer the shop is now you have department stores within department stores, particularly yeah. with ladies clothes. But I've noticed it with men's clothes as well. They don't have a department for underwear, a department for jeans, a department for jackets, a department for shirts. Each department belongs to the make. So Levi will have shirts and jackets and trousers and everything. French Connection will have the same. Monsoon will have the same. Hobbs will have the same. So consequently, if you want to buy a pair of trousers, you don't just go to one part of the shop and look. You have to go to five or ten or even more different areas to look at the different trousers that belong to the different makes who've set up in those areas. It's like a market. And I don't like it because a department store used to be a department store and it was all under one roof. It used to be, used to be Grace Brothers. Did, did, darling, absolutely. I mean, I know what it is. It's right. because the, <laughs> they're now representing different brands. And so you can go in and instead of saying, I want to buy a pair of trousers, you can say, I want to see what French Connection are selling today. But... Don't you believe it? It's all about yeah, money. It's... it's it's because it's because Debenhams or whoever the store is, uh, John Lewis, can sublease that bit of the shop and then yes. hand it over to them, and they get rent for the for doing that or whatever it is. And then they, John Lewis, don't have to bother with um, having to, to to source that stuff. I'm sure you're absolutely right. Out. And the only the only single solitary answer to this now is good old M and S. If you go to Marks and Spencers, you still have. Only Marks and Spencer's clothes, and therefore oh, the whole yeah. thing is laid out in the good old-fashioned way. 
<laughs> but um, it's a shame. So yeah. my mother came home jacketless. So if she freezes to death and dies next week, it'll be entirely John Lewis's fault. They did this in Chichester. <laughs> there was a sh- there was a shop called Morantz, Morantz, which was very much like Grace yeah. Brothers. Um, and uh, they ch- they sold out to House of Fraser or something, and then it became Army and Navy or the other way right. around. And this ex- is exactly what you're describing happened. You walked inside and you had to go to different um, sub stores inside for everything. So I do I do get what you're saying. It is annoying. Yes, it's a sh- it's a shame. It's a shame. It's it's better before. Shame on you. <laughs> In yeah. fact, I'm going to play the jingle. <laughs> Better before. There, how about that? The wrong jingle after <laughs> the nice. item, but there you go. <laughs> uh, very good. Right, my um, room 101 is the Logitech book. Well, it's a bit unfair, actually, because <laughs> if you were a child or you had very small hands, you'd be okay with this. But for me, it was a room 101. It's the Logitech Pop Keys Mechanical Wireless Keyboard. I wanted to try mechanical keyboard, a mechanical keyboard after all these right. years. And... Um, so you have this kind of clackety clack oh, old lovely. fashioned yes, keys, like keyboard. which is yeah, which is really nice, and all the rest of it. But this thing was so blooming tiny and small. Um, it, it my fingers were mushing into each other. I think the problem was that it's just designed for people with smaller hands. So I'm going to put it personally into room 101. Although I'm sure that people with small hands would disagree with me. And it's not cheap. It was 77 quid, and I think it's more now. Um, and it's uh, uh, in fact I got it on a, um, a, a lower price not that it matters so I'm sending it back very cute I'm sure it appeals to the pop culture and you know Japanese teens um, but it's very impractical it's very very colourful very um, glary it's also got this bunch of um, replaceable keycaps on the right hand side where you can put um, emojis on them and actually I did try that it works if you put the if you, you you do it through software on the computer Logitech software and if you assign say the top one to a smiley then we're pretty much wherever you are in whatever program on the computer you touch that and you get a smiley it does it, it does seem to work quite well um, but yeah really really nice the clackety clackety keys are, are just great fun for like five minutes that the novelty wears off the nostalgia's gone and you say to yourself I want to get back to my a proper keyboard. <laughs> you know, I let you off bringing things into cheapest chips that aren't really cheapest chips. They're cheapest the chips and the eggs and the bacon combined. But and now you're bringing something to Room 101 that actually sounds really nice. This sounds like a fun product. You've given it a good review, and because you're bitter and your hands are too big, you're giving it yeah. Room 101. I'm not sure how I, I feel about this, Ted. I, I did put my my caveat at the top. My caveat was it's very personal, and yeah, I, I'm sure that someone with smaller hands would would have great fun with it and enjoy it, but. Um, uh, yes. The, the truth of the matter is I didn't have anything to bring to Room 101 and I'm scrabbling <laughs> around there. <laughs> All right, I'll let you off. Now, here's an interesting one. <laughs> Gareth Williams, who brought us an incomprehensible streaming service earlier that I struggled with, puts into Room 101 the fact that there are too many streaming services. <laughs> <laughs> Gareth says, with his hypocritical hat on, The wealth of variety of content across so many streaming services makes for a great consumer marketplace. But at least but but at last count, we are funding eight of them and YouTube premium and ad hoc pay to view services like Google TV. We also run two VPNs to access USA and global based TV subs. It's often an effort to hunt down what is where and how to watch it. I remember a time when I bought something and it was mine. Oh, yes. Better before. Shall I play the jingle again? Now we don't actually (laughs) own anything. I found that. I found videos that I thought that I bought on Google are saying this has now expired. Somebody throw me a rope and save me from this costly, unconvoluted quagmire. Yes, I do agree. Well, watch less TV, (laughs) Gareth. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there is, you, you do have the choice to, to do that, of course. But, you know, gone are the days of your four channels or even yes, your three channels yeah. or even your two Aye, channels. when I were a lad. <laughs> the choice is huge. And and if you didn't want to buy into those um, eight or ten services and um, VPNing out to blah, 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 then I suppose you don't have to watch those programs. You can just use the 200, no, 800 and whatever it is channels on the, on the free-to-view yes. thing. 
Um, if you particularly if you like crap television, I guess it's the downside, you know, of having so much availability. When there were only four channels or three channels or two channels, we got used to that and we accepted it and we we were happy with them. It's just. It's a question of almost, I mean, I don't mean, Gareth, any disrespect by saying this, but it's a question of we as a community are being spoiled by too much content being offered to us. And naturally, it's going to become complicated to sort out the content from the content from the content, isn't it? Indeed. In the old days, if you didn't fancy it was on the telly, you went down yeah. the pub. And you know what I miss? <laughs> what I miss is going down the pub. What I miss is talking to people and saying, did you see so-and-so last night? And everybody saw it and you can have a chat about it. Yeah, that just doesn't happen yeah. anymore because what is the chance no. that, you know, unless it was the Oscars or some incredibly important news story that everybody's heard about, how is anybody going to know what anybody else watched last night? It's a shame. It's a shame. I do. Yeah, I do agree. I, I, there was a time when I, I realised, I, I woke up and smelt the coffee and I realised that I was paying um, Sky TV 80 quid a month and I ditched, I knocked it on the head. I'm not paying 80 quid a month to Sky TV. Um, but actually, Gareth is paying more probably for, for his services now than even that huge amount that I thought it was yes. then. I dread to think what it is for Sky now. But the, um, yeah, if you took eight services at like seven, eight pound, nine pound each, then, you know, you're up there, aren't you? And, and it can cost a fortune. I mean, it's okay if you can afford it. It's part of your your lifestyle yes. and that's you know you, you you work hard to earn money to do those things because you choose to fair enough but um it, it does seem like a lot of money and it me. also you have to be very careful not to become susceptible to the thing where you uh, you know as you may have said with you with your own just now you set up a direct debit and you lose track mm. and before you know it you're paying 90 pounds a month to eight different services and you hadn't realized and you're wondering where all your cash is going so you do have to take yeah. care don't you i rest your case <laughs> And indeed the case of Gareth Williams. Now, I'm really upset now. Very, very upset. Because? because there's nothing in Gold Star. We can't hear the jingle. No, but we can, we can give ourselves a Gold Star for doing a fabulous show today. Oh, OK, that'll do. <laughs> what are we like? I wish I did get PRS. I'd be cleaning up on this show. Oh, dear. That was fun, Ted. I mean, do you know what? It felt more like two mates down the pub having a chat this show, and I've really enjoyed yeah. myself. I do hope our listeners are still yeah. awake back there. But, um... I do yeah. agree. I do agree. I'm sure. I'm sure that people probably um, half listen to what we say most of the time anyway, which is fine. And we can have a chat about what's going on exactly. in our lives and... You know, it's all right. It's it's all very casual. We shouldn't be too prescriptive. We will be prescriptive about the fact that we'll be back in two weeks' time, though, assuming that you're back in I, the country. Hopefully, yes, assuming they let me back in. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you have a lovely I thank time you kindly, on your sir. five days. And um, we'll be back then afterwards to find out how you got on and also how I got on cutting oh, the grass. Oh, yes, that, I want to know. So, I want to know. Watch out for that one. Whatever works, dot works is our website. Links to everything in there. If you get lost, go to tedsalmon.com and you'll find your way back on track. Aidenbell.com is for Aiden. And yes, don't forget the MeWe group. Do let us know whatever works in your life. We'll bring the highlights of that to every show going forward as long as you tell us about it. If you don't tell us about it, we come. <laughs> Wrap it up, Ted. <laughs> don't forget. Whatever, whatever works. works. Works!